So whether your personal data is compromised in a Capital One style breach or your email password is being exposed, getting hacked can be a nightmare. But what should you do if it actually happens to you? Joining us this morning with more security expert Daniel Tobach from Sci Intelligence Inc. Welcome back to your Thanks morning. Thanks for having me on. A lot of tips on how to protect yourself online. But what if, despite all your best efforts, you use a separate email address, you know, you put in a fake birth date, your information still gets hacked. What should you do? Yeah, unfortunately, you can't stop it today. With, with all of our data being stored in servers and in different companies that get breached, we're kind of left to that mercy. But when you get breached, it's important to take a deep breath understand that this just occurred, and follow a couple simple steps. One of them is ask for credit monitoring. It's very important to be able to monitor your credit to see if there's any fishy, no pun intended, activities mm. going on. Is somebody taking a loan on you? Unfortunately, in Canada, we don't have the credit freeze option. It's more available in the US, which means actually no transactions are allowed prior to a confirmation from you. So that's a great, great one to try to use, and I think it's coming to Canada very soon. Uh, another way that people can be compromised, of course, is falling prey to a scam, and they can be very convincing. How do you safely verify <laughs> if a warning you've received about one of your accounts is real? And I'll give you an example. After the Capital One, uh, Capital One breach was made public, I got a phone call on my cell phone saying, your information has been breached. Please give us a call. I know that that's a scam, but not everybody's going to know that. Absolutely. So we, there's a correlated statistic that once there is a breach of a major company, you're going to you're gonna start getting the phone calls, the emails, uh, even sometimes letters in the mail to say, hey, you know, we need to change your password. We need to change your information. Can you log on here and can you give us more info? Rest assured that even when the institution gets breached, you will not get a call or an email to ask you to change your passwords. And I do say this, even when you get one of those fancy letters that maybe look a little weird, that doesn't look like it's, it's authentic, actually make the call. Go to the website. Don't use the phone number on the actual uh, letter. letter. Yeah. Call the institution and verify. Are you actually emailing me anything? Is, are you actually sending me anything? So it's important to validate those actual uh, those, those calls or, or, or letters. Does it make a difference if you replace your device or you purchase antivirus protection? So antivirus is good. It, it won't really stop you when your information gets compromised you know, by a financial institution. Uh, it's, it's always good to watch your devices, especially when you're using free Wi-Fi, just as an example, in different public places, because Wi-Fi can be intercepted and can be breached. So when you have your own devices, it's good to keep them up to date with the right patches. If you have been breached or compromised once before is, and your data has been sold or, or shared elsewhere, can you ever retrieve that? Is it once you've been breached, is your information always out there, always accessible, always being sold? Unfortunately, while it's out there, it's out there, kind of the horse has left the barn. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important to be very diligent, to look at your financial statements, you know, monthly credit card statements, and see if there's any activity you don't recognize. So it's important to be diligent in any particular time, at minimum one to two years post the breach, right, of, of, of your information. But once your information is out there, it's, it's very difficult to get it back. It is floating out there in the dark web uh, and so on. Uh, it's very frustrating for customers who have had their information hacked. They get very frustrated at these big companies that store our data, who uh, you, know, you trust to protect your information, some of the most vital currency that you have, and they don't. Is there any recourse for customers? So I think it's important today for customers, consumers, to really hold their financial institutions responsible. Actually, the men to know, what are you doing with my data? Where is my data stored? Is my data encrypted? And I find we're not doing enough of that here in Canada. We have to be a we little bit- We trust a lot. We, we trust a lot. We're very easy going. We trust a lot. Oh, they have our data. Everything will be okay. I think it's important to ask those tough questions and put pressure on, on places that actually have our data. Because unfortunately, when they get breached, we have no control of how they got breached. Sometimes it's not even publicly available that they were breached. Mm. So we're at the mercy of those institutions. Uh, it's an enlightening conversation, Daniel. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.